Hello. Welcome to Hyrule Science. Now, if you don't know what the series is, it's where I analyze every fusible item in Tears of the Kingdom. In today's episode, I'm going to be analyzing and hopefully finishing off the rest of the inventory items. So this video might be a bit scattered, but I'll do my best to make it digestible. To begin, let's talk meats. There's a lot of meats. Big meats, small meats, bird meats, dog meats, wait wrong game. These meats can be eaten raw for a little bit of health, or cooked to double their healing effectiveness. You can also sear them on a campfire or in hot areas to give more health, although they don't give nearly as much health as cooking. You can also freeze them to give a bit of health and some heat resistance for a while. Oh, and hey, you remember that annoying mechanic from Breath of the Wild where when you kill an animal in a cold area and if you wait too long the meat would freeze? They actually removed that. Thanks, Nintendo. But meat still freezes in cold water, so it balances out. Now, just a, a hypothetical, if you will. What if I told you that you should put meat on your shield? My, that's ridiculous. Why would I ever put meat on my shield? Wee! 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 <clears throat> Putting frozen meat on your shield, aside from gourmet meat and whole bird meat because they're too big, will let you shield surf around with super low friction. It's basically like having an ice block on your shield with all the benefits and almost none of the negatives. Like the fact that ice block shields melt in the sun and around low heat, whereas icy meat shields don't. The only downside to an icy meat shield is that it'll burn in hot areas, which makes sense, but then again, speed. Wee. Now notice how I didn't mention weapon fusions. That's only because they don't really do much aside from looking funny. Hey babe, what do you think of my raw meat spear? Now moving on from meats, but still technically talking about meats, what about fish and other aquatic stuff? I won't really talk about regular fish too much, since you can't fuse them for some reason, but you should get the gist by now. Description shows the effect, cook the fish for that effect, yada yada yada. But you can actually sear and freeze fish. Searing a fish of a certain type will put it into a category of cooked fish. For example, searing an armored carp and a mighty carp will give you the same generically named roasted carp. As for freezing, it works the same way as the meats, including shield surfing. Here I'll put up the inventory of meats and fish you can shield surf on. The ones with check marks on them means you can, and the one with X's on them mean you can't. This applies to both frozen and roasted as well. Moving on, so you want double damage. You could grab a good old Gerudo Claymore, or almost break a Royal Guard weapon for some quite large damage numbers. But what if I told you you could already achieve this from nearly the beginning of the game? So enemy fangs, yeah, they actually do double damage when you put them on bows. You could say it's a double damage bonus. Get it? But but bow bonus. This goes for all fangs and other regular kinds of boss loot. So Bacoblin Fangs, Moblin Fangs, Boss Bacoblin Fangs, Hinox Fangs, wait no that's a tooth, Horblin Claws, Lazalfos Talons, Frox Fingernails, Lionel Hooves, and Hinox Toenails. But wait, there's more. This even works for certain types of dragon parts. Well, that only applies to talons and fangs. But still, I actually didn't know this until the commenter Geometry-10 pointed this out. So thanks for that, Geometry-. Dash. I should probably be testing out bows more. Real quick, I'd like to get some basic ingredients out of the way, like rice and spices. They're explicitly meant for cooking, not fusing, so they don't have much function. Here's all the ones I'm talking about, by the way. Despite this, you can still fuse them, so here's a few funny names I was able to make. Rice Club. Egg Shield. Cheese Boomerang. Sugar Cane Long Bl- So, in previous episodes, I discussed that food ingredients and what they do like apples and carrots and whatnot. As for the roasted versions, there's not too much to say about them, as they're pretty much just their standard counterparts without any special bonuses. So that goes for uh, all of these. Except for mushrooms. Roasted mushrooms do keep their bounciness properties, as mentioned in episode two. Wait, what's that? You, you haven't watched the earlier episodes? Well, why not? What, what are you doing? You can't just watch the videos out of chronological- Oil jars are pretty much like pine cones, where they create a more powerful fire for 10 seconds. Just... Yes. Let me... Let me... Let me try to... Yes. Let me... There we go. You can also use them to create unique meals. As for dark clumps, they're used to make gloom-resist meals. You can make one by creating a standard meal, so let's say a skewer for example, and then adding the dark clumps. Each one added gives an extra gloom heart, with a maximum of three gloom hearts. This protection doesn't work for gloom attacks though, just for gloom puddles. Rock salt is also for meals, but it doesn't seem too useful in a practical sense as adding rock salt to a meal doesn't add any hearts. 
So just use the extra hand slot for another piece of meat. It's time to talk about gems. Yes, those colorful, funny rocks that do things. To start, star fragments are primarily used for armor upgrades. Very expensive armor upgrades. But you can also throw or shoot them with a bow to produce a ball of light that lasts... 7 seconds. Well, Fusing to a weapon lets you shoot a ball of light, and fusing to a magic rod lets you shoot... Get this! 3 balls of light. Oh, this doesn't work on Gibdos, by the way. You can use them in cooking, which guarantees a critical cook, which is what golden apples do already. Ruby, sapphire, and topaz are basically all the same except they have different elements. Ruby shoots fire, sapphire shoots ice, and topaz shoots lightning. Magic rods upgrade these to shoot more and bigger projectiles. Oh, and if you throw or shoot one of these funny little rocks, you can even nuke your enemies. Oh, yeah, uh, opal's there too. It just shoots water. Luminous stones don't do anything on weapons, but you can feed it to Don Dons for gems. I won't go in depth on this as I already did. As for flint, hit rock, get fire. That's literally all it does. I wish I had more to say. Oh, I forgot about this until now as I'm recording. Uh, amber and diamond just increase your damage. J j just sell them. Hey, you like guts? Huge guts. Well, that's too bad, because they're only good for cooking. I mean, it is cool to see them writhing on the ground, but I wish they had some type of practical use with fusing. With some testing, most if not all of the different types of guts give the same duration. So if you're going for duration, add more guts. If you're going for potency, add more insect parts. One thing I will say is that Gibdo guts and only Gibdo guts are special, and that they guarantee a critical cook with elixirs. But it seems a little... random. Sometimes you'll get a bonus to duration, extra hearts, or just potency. But upon further testing, this just happens to all elixirs that get a critical cook, and not just the Gibdo guts. Okay, we're close to finishing off the monster parts, so let's zip through them real quick. Octo balloons make a return from Breath of the Wild, and they don't see much use. They work the exact same, but at least this time, you can fuse them to bows to attach balloons from a distance. Oh, and there's also Octorok tentacles. We don't talk about Octorok tentacles. Lazalfo's tails uniquely extend your attacking range, and are especially good on boomerangs. Shooting elements of ones from your bow will also emit an explosion when landing. Their drop rate is also extremely balanced, and very totally not infuriating. <clears throat> Spoilers ahead. Oh hey, look at that, we did all the monster parts, so let's finish off the rest of the inventory materials. Ancient blades can be rarely found around the world, or bought from this construct next to Minoru after doing her dungeon for 50 Zonite. Hitting an enemy, and that includes melee, will immediately kill the enemy, sending them into the back rooms. The drawback to this is that you don't get the loot from the enemies. No, this doesn't work on bosses. This includes Phantom Ganon, by the way. But hey, on the bright side, you can use these to cheese things like the Lionel Arena to easily get Majora's Mask. King Scales. You get these during that one quest with that one fish guy. These scales are basically what would happen if you combined a key swing and a splash fruit. You can actually go back to King Dorfin and get five more, so long as you don't have any in your inventory and there aren't any around the world. So you can't cheese him for infinite king scales. Let's discuss wood. Of course, it's used to make campfires, but you'd be surprised to hear it actually has some fuse utility. Fusing wood to a non-metal weapon will essentially create a torch on the spot. You can also use wood during builds to make a hot air balloon that doesn't require energy, which I already mentioned in a previous episode, but I thought I might as well mention it here again. We're in the home stretch, guys. Four more to go. Zonite and large zonite. You get them by mining zonite outcrops, and can trade them in for crystallized charges and zonite charges. Oh, and by the way, those large zonite outcrops in the depths? They never respawn. Auto build, obviously, lets you pay zonite in place of missing parts in your builds for three zonite apiece. Except for batteries. Batteries cost 9 zonite, and big batteries cost 100 zonite. Hot damn. As for zonite charges, if you consume them and your regular batteries are full, you get yellow backup batteries. Well, so long as you haven't maxed out your batteries. If you have, you just consume them with no benefit. As for large zonite charges, eating one of these bad boys will fully restore your energy and overcharge your batteries for 30 seconds, so you can consume as much power as you desire for those 30 seconds with no penalty. Putting your regular Zonai charge into a dispenser gives one item, whereas two of them will give three. So it's worth roughly around one and a half dispenser points, if you will. Large Zonai charges, on the other hand, are worth around ten, with one of them giving ten items, 
and two of them giving 22, and so on and so forth. In case you're wondering, the max you can get out of a dispenser is 60 items with five large Zonai chargers. And that's everything. If I checked correctly, we finished the entire compendium and every inventory material. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new. Just a reminder, I have a spreadsheet on this series and all of the fusible items if you're interested in checking it out. Thanks again for making it this far, please like and subscribe, and I wish you a good time zone.